So, uh, so recall from the previous lecture that we were trying to define uh, what a morphism of varieties is. Okay, so uh, we have a pair of varieties, two varieties. Uh, they could be either affine or quasi-affine varieties, and then we want to say when a map between them is uh, is a morphism of varieties. Okay, and uh, we use uh, we use the we use the analogy that I gave you in the last lecture. Namely, the analogy from the the, the uh, topological spaces. Okay, so if X and Y are topological spaces and uh, F is a continuous map of topological spaces, of course you know that it a, a continuous map uh, pulls back continuous maps to continuous maps. It's just a restatement of the fact that the composition of continuous maps is continuous. And but the more beautiful thing is that if you have a set theoretic map that pulls back continuous maps to continuous maps, then it follows that that set theoretic map is itself continuous the proof is uh, deceptively simple and you we could say more or less tautological but this is the uh, but it's it the, the importance is uh, with the philosophy that you define a morphism as uh, a map uh, which pulls back good functions to good functions so let me uh, uh, let me make this definition uh, of what a morphism between varieties should be so here we go uh, let x and y be varieties uh, by a morphism uh, from x to y phi from x to y we mean a continuous map Uh, phi from x to y such that for every open subset v in y the pullback map the uh, the pullback of functions of regular functions I should say the pullback of the pullback uh, of maps via phi takes regular functions on V, namely O V to regular functions on u namely o u so that so the diagram is like this here is x here is y here is phi and here is the open subset and open subset v of course uh, whenever i say open subset it's of course non empty okay uh, and uh, 
in, in all these situations we uh, we are not going to look at the case when uh, the open subsets are empty because we do not want it defined regular functions on an empty open set okay. So, uh, uh, so of course I should tell you that uh, where uh, u is actually f inverse v okay. So here is v and here is u which is f inverse v and uh, this is also open that is because phi is a continuous map of course x and y are varieties so they have the Zariski topology therefore uh, you know what open sets mean and you take an open set here the inverse image of an open set is an open set because uh, and I should use not f uh, um, I have messed up the notation it should be phi inverse here it should be phi inverse there as well okay and I have this map from phi inverse v to v now this map from phi inverse v to v will give you a map from O v to O u and what is this map from O v to O u you what is what is the, what is an element of O v it is a regular function on v okay an element of o, o v is a regular function on v. So what is a regular function on v it is a map from v to k a regular function on v is a map from v to k which uh, as we had defined in the uh, in the earlier lectures is a function which is locally given by quotients of polynomials uh, uh, where the polynomials are considered in the right number of variables in which v or y is uh, uh, in the right number of variables which is equal to the uh, dimension of the affine space in which v or y is sitting inside okay. So uh, well here is v and here is phi uh, this is uh, uh, u so u takes phi uh, phi takes u to v and then the pull back will be this map you pull back essentially means composition so this is this is first apply phi then apply uh, 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 f and this is called as phi upper star of f so this is f going to phi upper star of f the pull back of f which is by definition uh, first applying phi and then following it up by f so uh, so this is the requirement the requirement is you take an open subset of the target variety take a regular function on that if you compose it with phi you should get a regular function on the source okay this is the condition this is just the condition that the map phi is continuous and it pulls back regular functions to regular functions okay this is the definition of what a morphism is what you must understand is the following that uh, if you go down from the category of varieties to the category of topological spaces that is you forget the variety structure and just look at all these things as and the underlying topological spaces with the of course with the Zariski topology then what will happen is if you give me a if you give me a continuous map if you give me a morphism phi of course phi is continuous and if you give me a v and if you give me a regular function on v this f is of course going to be continuous because I have already proved to you that uh, regular functions are continuous okay a regular function from a variety is always a continuous map continuous with the target k being thought of as a1 with the Zariski topology this is something that we proved last time okay. So since phi is continuous and f is continuous it is very clear that f circle phi which is the pullback of f by uh, uh, pullback of f by phi which is also phi upper star f it is clear that this is continuous okay but what our requirement is that it is not just a continuous map from u to k for the Zariski topology it should actually be a regular function from u to k for the Zariski topology that is the requirement okay so that is that is that is what has to be singled out okay. So the moral of the story is a continuous map such that if you take a regular function on the target on an open subset of the target and take the composition okay what you sh get on the source a subset of the on, the on the right subset of the source is not just a continuous function it has to be more it has to be itself a regular function namely it has to be locally given by quotients of polynomials that is the requirement okay. So it is a philosophy that it is a map of varieties is a map which is continuous and which pulls back good functions to good functions and the good functions here are regular functions okay. Now uh, uh, so here is the so here is the uh, 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 so 
the point I want to make is the following. Uh, so here is a uh, 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 so here is a nice little theorem. The theorem is if you look at uh, uh, if you take a if you take a uh, uh, variety x and look at all the possible morphisms into a1 you will get exactly all the regular functions on x okay. So uh, morphisms of varieties from x to a1 is naturally isomorphic to o x okay. So the the regular functions are actually morphisms into a1 there is no difference okay. What are elements of ox they are they are they are they are maps into a1 which is just k with the Zariski topology all right and which are locally given as quotients of polynomials that is that is what a regular function on x means okay and what is a morphism of varieties from x to a1 it is also a map from x to a1 which is a map from x to k but then the condition is that it has to be continuous and it should pull back uh, regular functions to regular functions okay and the beautiful thing is that there is no uh, difference between a regular function and a morphism into a1. So regular functions are exactly the same as morphisms into a1 okay so, so let me write that that is regular functions are so in fact I should not even put isomorphic I should put equal to are morphisms into a1 so of course is a1k where k is the fixed algebraically closed field uh, over which we are working okay so it's a uh, so it's a very nice uh, theorem it says it tells you that uh, uh, your morphisms into a1 are the same as regular functions into a1 okay so uh, so let's try to prove this so you know uh, so what you do is uh, so what is a map of course this map is it's the identity map it is the identity map but the only thing is that when you take a regular function on x the target is taken as k and the target k you do not care about the topology on the target k but if you put a topology on the target k and call it a1 then you know a regular function is continuous so it is certainly a continuous map from x to a1 but the fact is it is more it is actually a morphism from x into a1 okay that is what this theorem says so let us let us prove this. Uh, 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 let let uh, phi from x to a1 be a morphism okay what do I have to show I have to show that phi is a regular function all right now so uh, uh, so this means phi upper star from uh, O of V to O of phi inverse of V uh, for any open uh, set phi uh, inside A1 okay. So uh, if you if what is a morphism a morphism is a is a map which is continuous and it pulls back regular functions so if you give me an open set in the target which is an open subset of a1 then and you give me a regular function on, uh, on, on that open set on a1 which is an element of ov then applying phi upper star the pullback will should give me a regular function on phi inverse v okay. Now what I am going to do is I am uh, this way is actually very easy you put put v equal to a1 itself put v equal to a1 okay then you get phi upper star will go from o of a1 to o of x okay because phi inverse of a1 is x the inverse image uh, of the 
target space under any map is the whole source space okay I will get this okay and then what you and then we will use the fact that you know in O on O of A1 see I have uh, I have the identity map see the identity map on A1 is a regular function on A1 see the identity map on A1 is is a map that sends every point of A1 to its every point of A1 namely every point of K to itself and what is it you know O of A1 if you want is A of A1 the ring of functions on A1 which is Kx okay and what does the identity map correspond to it corresponds to the polynomial X identity map corresponds to the polynomial X the polynomial X evaluated at lambda gives you lambda okay so O of A1 is the same as A of A1 okay that is something that we have already seen O and A coincide for affine varieties alright. So O of A1 is same as A of A1 and identity map in O of A1 is actually uh, that corresponds to the function defined by the polynomial X okay. So this is uh, so identity map is certainly a regular function identity map on A1 is certainly a regular function and what does it go to it will go to phi upper star of the identity map on A1 but phi upper star of the identity map on A1 is just phi phi upper star of the identity map on A1 is by is 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 identity map on A1 is composition with phi which is just phi and but then you are saying that this is here so you are just saying that phi is in OX so this this will tell you phi belongs to OX so it is it is very clear that a morphism from X to A1 is certainly an element of OX okay so 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 uh, uh, phi as an element of morphism oh, uh, phi as a morphism of varieties from X to A1 is certainly also in OX right so this is very this is very trivial alright I have to now do things the other way around I will have to say that I have to start with a regular function and I will have to start with a regular function on X and say that that is a morphism okay so let me do let me do the other way conversely start with uh with with an f in ox okay uh start with an f in ox right i'll i want to show that f is actually a morphism into a1 so you know my f in ox means that f is a regular function defined on x its target is k and we have already seen that if this target k is given the Zariski topology and is thought of as a1 then this f is of course continuous okay we have already seen already seen that a regular function that regular functions are continuous so that means that uh, f from x to uh, a1 is continuous so what are the two defining conditions for a morphism it should be uh, it should be a continuous map and then it should pull back uh, it should pull back uh, uh, regular functions to regular functions so uh, we will have to check we will have to check to check for every open set v in a1 and every uh, psi in OV uh, F upper star psi which is just psi F followed by psi is in O of F inverse V okay this is what you will have to check you have, you have to check that it pulls back regular functions to regular functions right. So uh, now you see 
what you must understand is that B is an open subset of A1 and of course I am certainly not looking at empty sets alright. So you know uh, a non empty open subset of A1 is actually a basic open set okay because you see uh, what you must understand is um, the the open sets in A1 are complements of finitely many points okay and therefore the they are, they are complements of finitely many points and uh, there is always a polynomial with a, with roots exactly at those points and it is the 0 set of that polynomial which is the complement of this open set and therefore this open set is defined as the basic affine open set given by the non vanishing of that polynomial okay that polynomial which vanishes at those points in the complement of the open set. You must understand that uh, the, the important fact we are using is that A1 has uh, the, the only closed sets in A1 are finitely many points and this is basically commutative algebraic uh, reflection of the it is a reflection of geometric reflection of the commutative algebraic fact that every every uh, ideal uh, in in the polynomial ring in one variable over a field is generated by a single element okay it is a it is a PID right. So uh, so the fact is that uh, so uh, let B be D of uh, uh, G okay where G is an element of uh, if you want uh, uh, A of A1 which is identified with uh, Kx G is a polynomial in one variable right and V is uh, D of G it is a it is a basic affine open defined by G right. Then uh, the, then what is O of V then O of V will be O of DG and what is O of DG our definition uh, as we have checked it is just Kx localized at G okay the 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 the, uh, the regular functions on uh, DG are the same as the uh, the A uh, of DG and that is defined to be the localization by G okay. So O of V is just this okay and uh, so what is an element of O of V of, of the form it is of the form uh, some H by G power M where M is a positive uh, non negative integer okay uh, an element of uh, O V looks like uh, H by G power M alright this is how an element in the localization uh, looks like and you are thinking of this H by G power M as a function on uh, as a regular function on uh, V and every regular function on V looks like that right and now uh, if you so let me draw this diagram so I have X I have A1 and here is F and uh, uh, here is uh, D of H okay uh, which is my V and then I have F inverse V uh, this is uh, this is open of course F is a regular function it is continuous so the inverse image of an open set is open so F inverse V is open and then I have uh, I have on D of H I have a regular function okay and that regular function is given by H by G power M this is an element of O of D of H and then I compose it with it with f to get the pull back this is a regular function into k okay uh, uh, oh sorry this is d of g it should be d of g I am sorry it should be d of g I think I have messed it did I mess it up somewhere there no I did not okay I messed it up here all right it should be d of g so uh, yeah so I have H by G to the M which is a regular function on DG and then I compose this to get the pullback function which is F upper star of H by G power M which is by definition equal to first apply H and then apply uh, uh, first apply F and then apply H by G power M and so it is going to be uh, well uh, so if you calculate it is actually F's H circle F by uh, H circle G to the M this is what it is okay so uh, because uh, 
this is what it, it will be when you evaluate it. If you take uh, if you take an x here then it will go to f x and when you evaluate h by g power on m on f x you will get h of f x by g to the m f x. So, the effectively this is h circle f by h uh, h circle g to the whole to the m alright and here of course uh, uh, and now uh, uh, the the point is that what do I have to check I have to check that this is uh, I have to check that this is a uh, this is a regular function on uh, f inverse v I have to check that this is a regular function on f inverse v okay uh, so is something wrong uh, oh sorry this is g sorry you are right it is g circle okay it is g circle oops yes g circle f to the m right yes yeah yeah please check that it is f followed by h <coughs> divided by f followed by g whole to the m yeah thank you yeah. So, uh, so I will have to check that this is a regular function I mean if you think about it for a moment you will not uh, hesitate to realize that this is a regular function okay. But then uh, uh, if you want uh, the the way to look at it is the following the way to look at it is that you see uh, the locus see f is a see so 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 let's so let's look at what f is uh, so f is a f is a regular function on x okay hmm. so you know I want to say the following thing I just want to say that if if you if I tell you that h circle f is a regular function f on f inverse v and g circle f to the m is also a regular function on f inverse v that that does not vanish on f inverse v then the quotient will also be a regular function uh, on f inverse v I am just using the following thing I am using the following thing namely that suppose you have a um, regular function that does not vanish then it is reciprocal will also be a regular function because the only condition for a regular function is that it is locally given by a quotient of polynomials and if that quotient of polynomials does not vanish it means that the numerator polynomial does not vanish if they are in the uh, if there are no common factors and if the numerator polynomial does not vanish then the reciprocal of the quotient is also a valid quotient of polynomials and uh, that tells you that the reciprocal of a, uh, of a regular function that does not vanish is also a regular function alright. So therefore it I claim therefore it is very clear that it is enough to show that h circle f is a regular function it is enough to show that h circle f is a regular function on f inverse v g circle f to g circle f is a also a regular function of on f inverse v and g circle f does not vanish on f inverse v okay. It is very clear that g circle f cannot vanish on f inverse v because if g circle f vanished at a point on f inverse v it will mean that um, uh, at the image of that point under f g will vanish but then the image of that point is supposed to lie in dg where g cannot vanish so it is very clear that g circle f cannot vanish on on, on uh, f inverse v. So the only thing therefore I have to prove is that h circle f or g circle f are actually uh, regular functions okay but so, so let me write that down it is enough enough to show that uh, h circle f and g circle f are regular functions on f inverse v okay this is all I will have to show okay. Now uh, this is again something that is uh, very very easy to see because you see uh, see f f I the, the f I started with was a regular function on x. So f is given by a quotient of polynomials in the right number of variables the number of variables being the the dimension of the affine space in which x sits alright. So f is a f is locally a quotient of polynomials okay. So h circle f will also be a quotient of polynomials the same number of variables because h is just uh, uh, h is just a polynomial in one variable when I take a polynomial in one variable 
and substitute for that variable another polynomial in some m variables the resulting thing will again be a polynomial in m variables it is obvious therefore the moral of the story is that uh, it is very clear that since f is locally a quotient of uh, uh, polynomials uh, h circle f, f is locally a quotient of polynomials on x okay then h circle f is also locally a quotient of polynomials on x okay. So let me write that down this is this is obvious for locally f is equal to uh, p by q where p comma q are uh, polynomials in the right number of variables uh, which is uh, a of a n with with uh, x sitting inside a n okay and uh, and uh, you know and if h uh, is equal to h of x is equal to sigma uh, a i x to the i i equal to 1 to say some t then uh, h circle f is locally h of uh, uh, p by q which is sigma i equal to 1 to t a i t power i by q power i okay which is uh, which is a which is a polynomial uh, in uh, uh, k of x1 etc xn divided by some power of q so you are done so the moral of the story is that uh, if you really think about it it is very clear that uh, a regular function is also a morphism so there is no difference between regular functions on a variety and morphisms into a1 there is absolutely no difference okay so uh, the beautiful thing is that to define a morphism we started with regular functions and then found that regular functions are themselves special cases of morphisms okay and that in, th in that sense it should not be very surprising but you must understand that you see right from the beginning this is again uh, you know uh, uh, amplifying more and more the philosophy of Felix Klein that you know the geometry of the space is completely controlled by the functions you choose on it so you know we started with affine space we started with the n dimensional uh, space k n we chose the functions to be polynomials using the polynomials we defined the Zariski topology on k n okay and then from the Zariski topology we started uh, translating back into commutative algebra and we came down to defining uh, try we first came down to guessing what should be regular functions okay for example uh, on basic open sets and then generally what should be regular function what the regular function should be on a general open set okay and then after we define regular functions uh, once we define regular functions we fo found that uh, if you take uh, affine varieties the regular functions are just polynomials okay and uh, we also found that uh, using these regular functions we could define morphisms and then uh, it is not surprising that finally regular functions themselves uh, themselves turn out to be morphisms okay all right so so that is uh, that is a very nice thing it is a ni very nice result but now um, what I am going to do is that I am going to say that this is the statement here is only uh, it is still a special case of a, a very very general statement okay so let me uh, let me make that statement. So, um, so again, let's let's uh, let's look at that statement. Uh, morphisms of varieties. So this is morphism in the category of varieties from X to A1. Uh, 
uh, is identified with OX. Okay, and uh, you know uh, and I, I just want to uh, uh, say that this is isomorphic to homomorphisms of uh, K algebras from A of A1 which is which can be identified with Kx to Ox okay. So you see now what I am what I am trying to do is I am I am now uh, uh, trying to uh, translate things uh, see uh, on this side the morphisms I have is in the category of varieties. Now I want to go this is the geometric part this is the geometric side I want to go to the commutative algebra side and I want to translate morphisms of varieties into morphisms of rings in this case morphisms of K algebras and this is the this is the way I do it what I do it uh, what I do is I think of OX as the as be being I interpret it as being bijected to the set of all K algebra homomorphisms from the uh, A of A1 which is Kx to Ox. See you know uh, there is this there is this universal property of the polynomial ring in one variable which says that a K algebra homomorphism from a polynomial ring in one variable is completely dictated by the image of the variable x okay. So the so any K algebra homomorphism from Kx to Ox from, from Kx to any ring is simply controlled by what you are sending x to. So mo more generally I am so let me recall universal property of Kx of Rx okay uh, uh, where of course R is a commutative ring with 1 what is the universal property the universal property is that uh, if if B is if A is any R algebra then A uh, home R algebras from uh, Rx to A can be identified with A by simply sending a map F uh, from Rx to A to Fx to the element Fx of A because it is a substitution right it all uh, uh, R sending a map from Rx to something means that you are substituting X for something in every polynomial uh, in X with coefficients in R so it, it completely is controlled by what you are substituting X with if you substitute x with some lambda then you have to substitute every polynomial in x uh, with x in place with lambda in place of x so it is controlled by that this is the universal property and in fact this this universal property is uh, uh, this universal property is uh, uh, is also valid in several variables uh, 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 more generally uh, homomorphism as R algebras from R x1 through xn to A is isomorphic to A to the n where you simply send a map f from R x1 through xn to A to the tuple fx1 dot 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 fxn to the n tuple that is a map an R algebra homomorphism from a polynomial ring in n variables is dictated by the images of those variables this is these statements are uh, restatement of the universal property of the polynomial ring over a given ring okay. So and I am just applying uh, instead of R I have put the field K and instead of A I have put OX so the homomorphism from K algebra is from uh, Kx to Ox is just Ox and that is what this is okay and now let me tell you how this statement 
generalized. The statement generalizes like this. Okay. It's it's very beautiful. Uh, so it generalizes like this. Morphisms from X to A one can be identified with homomorphisms of K algebras from A of A one to O X. And uh, morphisms from uh, X to A n can be identified with homomorphisms of K algebras from uh, A of A n to O X. And morphisms from X to Y, okay, where Y is a fine, okay. So uh, instead of taking the target to be A1, I can take the target to be AN. Instead of taking the target to be a AN, I can take the target to be an affine variety. So the morphisms from any variety into an affine variety can be identified with homomorphisms of K algebras from the affine coordinate ring of that affine variety to O x sorry this should be uh, y and mind you this A y is the same as O y there is no difference because y is affine. And uh, the uh, in particular you see uh, in particular if x is affine the last statement says that the morphisms so here of course these are all morphisms as varieties on this side it is the geometric side there are morphisms between geometric objects and this side is the algebra side the commutative algebra side. So the morphisms of varieties from X to Y can be identified with uh, homomorphisms of K algebras from AY to AX and mind you I can replace OX by AX because OX and AX are the same because X is an affine variety okay. So this is the <coughs> this is the these are the two important statements this one. and this one and why are these statements important uh, these statements uh, we will we will prove these statements okay uh, and they are just uh, you know generalized versions of this first statement which is just the simple statement that uh, the regular functions on uh, variety are the same as morphisms into a1 okay it is just a generalization it is a grand generalization of that but how grand it is is that it actually gives you an equivalence between the category of affine varieties and the category of finitely generated k algebras that is the reason why this is a very important statement. So you have a uh, category uh, so uh, category uh, so so let me do that in the next board so that I have a little bit more space to write down what I want to write down. So what I do is now I can uh, really complete the picture that I stay I gave uh, several lectures ago and then I was uh, just uh, you know throwing statements at you. So here is on this side I take the category of affine varieties okay and here the objects are affine varieties namely uh, irreducible closed subsets of an 
for some uh, some n positive these are the objects in the category and I am going from there to the category of finitely generated k algebras that are integral domains sometimes instead of writing so much people just say the category of affine coordinate uh, the category of uh, co affine rings over k the affine rings means they are actually uh, rings of functions on affine varieties okay so uh, and abstractly they defined as finitely generated k algebras that are integral domains which means that you are just taking a finite uh, you are just taking a polynomial ring in finitely many variables over k and going modulo a prime ideal so that you get an integral domain okay and you know i have this i have a i have a functor that, that takes objects to objects here so what it does is that if you give me an x it takes this x to well uh, uh, a of a of x okay so it tends it takes x to a of x and it takes a n to a of a n and it takes this closed immersion to a quotient okay and you know what that map is if you call this closed map if you call this closed inclusion as i x you know what this map is this is just i x star you can check that this closed this map the inclusion map is actually a morphism of varieties and you can check that the pullback i x star that induces that it induces from the o of this to the o of this which is the same as the a of this to the a of this is simply the restriction you can check that okay. So this i x gives you this i x star okay and what are the uh, what are the uh, morphisms the morphisms here are well if you have a if you have x and y to affine varieties I, I get you, so you you have a morphism f then that will give rise to a map on this side that will go the other direction so it will go from a y to a x and you know what that is that is just f star it is a pullback. So the fact is that if you give me a morphism of varieties the pullback map is actually a ring homomorphism okay that is something that you can very easily check it is obvious and in fact it is a k algebra homomorphism so the, the the morphisms on this side are k algebra homomorphisms they are ring homomorphisms which take one to one and which respect the vector space structure they are k linear so they are k algebra homomorphisms and the fact is that this is uh, this is the functor now a is a functor it is a functor because it goes not only does it associate an object to an object but it associates a morphism to a morphism okay to every morphism varieties you get a uh, associated k algebra homomorphism so this is a functor and the fact is is that this is a this is an equivalence of categories this is an equivalence of categories because there is uh, an inverse function functor which is which as i told you is given by max spec the max spec functor starting with a starting with a finitely generated k algebra a i can give you I can look at max spec A that is a variety okay that can be identified with a variety and if you give me a k algebra homomorphism G uh, uh, phi from A to B then what you will get is you will get a uh, from the max spec to the max spec you will get a homomorphism in the reverse direction namely max spec phi and this is just pull back of uh, give a, given a prime ideal in B uh, I mean given a prime ideal in B the inverse image of the prime ideal will be a prime ideal in A and the fact is you can check that because these are finitely generated k algebras which are integral domains in K is an algebraically closed field if you take a maximal ideal in B and you pull it back you will get a maximal ideal in A and so it will take max spec to max spec and this is the inverse functor and these two functors are inv inverses of each other in the sense that you start with an object you go then and come back what you get is an isomorphic object okay 
and then you similarly if you start there you go here and come back you will get something that is you will get an isomorphic k algebra. So if you start from here and go and come back you will get an isomorphic variety if you start from there with an algebra go and come back you will get an isomorphic k algebra okay and that is why these two functors are called inverse functors and we say that each of them defines an equivalence between the geometric side which is the category of affine varieties and the commutative algebraic side which is the category of finitely generated k algebras which are integral domains and you know uh, it is uh, it is easy but <laughs> and certainly not an exaggeration to say that this is the full blown form of the Hilbert Nullstellen sets okay with all the other definitions in the right place this is the this is the this is the grandest form of Hilbert's Nullstellen sets okay. So with that I will stop this lecture.